What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Kofi Kingston, a.k.a. one-third of the New Day. You're not going to say it with me, sir? Oh, oh yeah, God. come on. You better participate. Let's try, Let's try it again. <laughs> one-third of the New Day. And you are watching The Young and the Wrestlers. <laughs> Welcome to the Young and the Restless, the Pop Culture's WWE podcast, Raw Analysis. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Betson, alongside. I'm Zelina Vega's new business partner. I'm Jim. As I said, this is our Raw breakdown, and this comes at you every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. on your podcast services, 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you want to join that wrestling conversation, head over to facebook.com slash group slash the pop cultures, Twitter, Discord, Instagram, all those links are in the down below area. But if you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash the pop culture. Because when we're not streaming games, we're streaming these podcasts, man, live to you. So if, if it's a if it's a roll that you're after, it's a Wednesday night. If it's SmackDown that you're after, it's a Monday night. It's all well and good. But if you want some PlayStation news, that's a Saturday. Saturday afternoon for you. It's all exciting over there. But if you want to support us in a more financial uh, uh, type of style, head over to patreon.com slash pop culture. Support us any dollar value. Get no real, re no real re reward other than that personal satisfaction that you kind of helped a small place. If you want to support us in a one-star fashion, have a head over to popculturestack.com slash shop where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. If you are listening on a podcast service of uh, whatever, be sure to give us a five-star rating, leave us a little cheeky review. Well, you know, it all helps. Tell your friends. You're like, hey, you want to listen to a show that's uh, sometimes abbreviated to Raw Anal? Uh, yeah, I do. Tell your friends. Hashtag Raw Anal. Send them to the Raw Anal. Mm -hmm. I already regret saying that. <laughs> How are you, Jim? I'm good. I feel like I need to breathe after that because you sounded like you got out of breath and that made me out of breath. Yeah, I get really enthusiastic because like it's it's one of these things. Like I listen to I listen to a lot of podcasts, right? Because it's kind of yeah. the medium that I really enjoy, and I do find that like eight out of ten times. You know, they're all they're all kind of flat, and they're like, "Hey, uh, you know, welcome to the like not NPR style, but it's just like, hey, okay." Mm. And like sometimes there's minor inflections, but not. Nah, I want to make I want to keep that shit energetic because that it works for video, it works for audio. Excitement in your voice, excitement breeds excitement. Yes. Way sexier than I intended. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm still out of breath. That's exciting. But yeah, so yeah. how has your week been so far? Busy man. I I I'm shocked that it's only Wednesday. It does feel later in the week. Yeah, it really does. But no, good. It's been really nice. Mm, it has been. How really about nice. you? Uh, yeah, my week's been all right. It's been all right. It's been, it's been, uh, it's been good. No real, real complaints this week. Uh, yeah, no, it, yeah. I got, it's one of those uneventful weeks, but it feels like, you know what? I've enjoyed this week. This week has not been horrid. Mm hmm. Speaking of not horrid, let's have a chat about this epi this week's episode of Raw. Yeah. So this episode of Raw took place in Salt Lake City, Utah, a place that may have just been part of the Arctic Circle, judging by the photos. It looked dumpster. It looked horrible there. There's yeah. snow everywhere. Everyone's all cold, except everyone was in the building. That building was flat chat for Raw this week, which is very exciting. Yeah. Yep. But uh, the show did start off with good friend of the show, may not even know we exist, Randaddy Orton. Randy. He comes out in the ring to address the crowd about his uh, actions last week against the newly returned Edge. We see a highlight reel of Edge being taken out on a stretcher, which we didn't get to see on telly, by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's awesome. crazy stuff, scary stuff. Yeah. They do uh, confirm that Edge is at home with his family recovering. Um, yeah. Lord knows the state of his uh, medical condition after that. Well, the biggest concern for me is okay, it was all neck and head focused, man. Mm -hmm. Like that that's the where uh, Edge's difficulties are and he's busted up neck. So yeah. personally, I was like, I, I was shocked by the RKO as we discussed last week. Then the chair yeah. shots. I'm like, what are you doing, mate? 
What are you yeah. doing? As I said, it feels like Randy Orton was doing the, hey, look, this is a wounded animal. I'm going to be the predator that I am, and I'm going to take down this wounded animal. But rather than, like, for my own uh, uh, consumption, using a bad example, because really, he doesn't literally eat them, but it's more of a, as a friend, I'm going to take you out of your misery. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Well, I did mention that Randy Orton does have the label of the legend killer. Do he you does, think as you said. That he's trying to, I guess, put another trophy on the shelf. Um, as we discussed last week, I think it's very possible. However, I yeah. do think it was. Uh, I personally think it's more of the, you know, uh, uh, the the animalistic nature of Randy Orton is what comes through there. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, he doesn't have much to say. He tries to say something and doesn't, and then does, and then doesn't, and then does, then doesn't, then walks away. I loved it. So uh, it, I was, I was counting because I was watching it on Foxtel. So I was looking at how long it was running for. It was like nine minutes, and he oh, had wow. he hadn't said a fucking Boy. thing. So Randy walks in, walks That's around the real. rings, kind of dawdles his way in, ponders, uh, you know, uh, and like stands the ropes and like thinking face on. Then he gets up and he walks around a little bit more and sits and ponders and gets up and mm -hmm. you know. Never really delivers anything. And he kind of like, look, I, I guess I have to justify. Just ripping him apart. Dude, and they didn't stop. Mm hmm The whole time, they were just giving Absolutely. him grief. So good. But, um, you know, this is, this is classic Randy Orton. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was thinking about it today. I was like, you know, is Randy Orton jaded from you know, what happened to him back when he was a champion, like when he first started and the whole like Batista Triple H thing where mm -hmm. Evolution basically just turned their back on him. Is he the way he is because of that? Um, I had all these crazy thoughts running through my head today. It's very possible. Like this does sound like mm -hmm. the response of someone that's had like some previous trauma. And it's because yeah. you can see like it's almost that impulsive, I've done the action and then I feel the guilt. It's like, yeah. oh, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. Oh, fuck, I've done it. All right, now what do I do? Yeah. Oh, ah yeah. man, I can't think my. Yeah, it's that impulsiveness. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's very interesting to see where this is going to go. Mm. Um, I'm very interested to see how Edge is. Um, when we'll see him again, if we'll see him again. That's very um, true. But I definitely reckon if he's if he's coming back, and like he is okay, there's going to be a match at WrestleMania. Yeah, he's this. come for blood. Like, because the next pay per view between so the pay between now and WrestleMania, we've got Super Showdown, uh, and then Elimination Chamber. Presumably, it's not being a hundred percent announced yet. And then WrestleMania, and I don't see either of them performing in Saudi Arabia. I don't see either of them uh, having a fight at Elimination Chamber. Mm. I feel that this will be you, the like, WrestleMania match. Yeah, it has to be. So e even like Randy being like, "Look, if we're gonna do this, you need to do this at your best. I'm gonna give you two months. You mm -hmm. train up, get good, and we'll see you at Mania." Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to think of, of other ways that, that could go. And I, like, we're not. I, I don't think we're going to see Edge get involved with anybody else between now and then. Randy may just occasionally like tear at someone between now and then, but sort of like little small increments, I suppose. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, speaking of small increments, let's have a chat about Alistair Black. Uh, yes. So from last week, he had a bit of a discussion around the idea that no longer will people be, uh, he'll be requesting people come to him to, f to pick a fight. Uh, instead, he will be going to people Taking to pick fight. said fight. Uh, so this week, we saw him not take on Jobber McJobface. We see him take on great. Eric Young, Eric which Young. we really, I, I, I'm glad. I enjoyed. Mm. It was nice to see him actually have, like, face somebody who can put up a fight. Yeah, like it. It was good. It was good to see the util, like the the roster utilized. Like, when was the last time we saw Eric Young? Uh twenty four seven championship. Like, he was chasing it at one point, and that was it. Exactly. Yeah, we haven't. No, is the best way to describe it. So it was really nice to have that happen. Um, he does obviously win the match. He reiterates the fact that he is going to bring the fight to people. Um. I'm interested to see where it'll go. I really enjoyed what he had to say here. It was all about the mm -hmm. idea of, you know, uh, people being told that they can do whatever they set their mind to, whatever they want to do. I don't, like, I don't think this is face Alistair Black or anything, but it's very much a situation of you. You can do what you put your mind to it, and I am doing what I put my mind to. The, I am a... Remember, like, I think it was essentially... Remember when you're lying... As you lie there on the back, 
why are you not back? I remember this was from someone who did what they could. You know, something along the lines like that. Oh, yeah. It was, it's, um, you know, I'm somebody who was told I can be anything I want to be. Yeah, and I want to kick like, your ass is what he's getting at. Yeah, basically. Um, I'm really excited mm. because I feel like this is going to be like him like slowly chewing up the food chain um, like into like something. I reckon this is going to be super long term. I reckon it'll probably run into next year and like have a championship match. Yeah. So do you see you see him year. going for the big belt or maybe the likes of the United States Championship? I'm not sure. I don't think. I don't think he'll go for any smaller belts. I don't think he'll go for like. Um, what's on Raw? The United States. Mm. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think so. I think he'll he'll make his way up the food chain and end up in a universal title picture. Uh, well, that's that's SmackDown, so that's... Oh, sorry, yeah. heavyweight. I still got it mixed up too. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, in my head, it's this red belt, but no, no, that's on the other side. But um, mm. I'm similar to you. I do think there will come a point where he'll just go jump and go straight to the top end. Uh, I don't think there's any opportunity now. I think it's more of a no. waiting game. Um, yeah, like I said, long term. Yeah, so I, I think in a, little, in a little while, he'll just kind of... TikTok, you know, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, sort of make his way through the current roster mm-hmm. uh, as it stands, and then he'll make that go. I do think uh, a United States Championship is certainly possibly on his target. If mm-hmm. it, it would make sense for him to not uh, miss up that opportunity if it did happen, because. Yeah. Although it doesn't seem to be always that case, uh, the mid the mid card championship should be a uh, a, a way to you get you moving up into that higher card. So you know mm-hmm. if, if you if you've done enough to earn this belt, you should then be able to move up to the next. It's not always mm-hmm. that simple, but I do think it's um, within his interest to at least destroy everything on his way up to the top. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um. But, I, yeah, I, I certainly don't see him going against the likes of, you know, Humberto Carrillo, who it looks no. to be the current uh, focus towards the United States Championship. Yes. Um, it wasn't present tonight as Andrade was uh, away, you know, as from mm-hmm. the, the DDT he received on the concrete outside. So similar to I Co- swear to fucking Christ, if I see one more fucking hammerlock DDT on the fucking cement, I am going to riot. I am so sick to fucking death of DDTs, Hammerlock DDTs on fucking cement. We've seen it every fucking week for like two months. Please stop. Oh, sorry. I just had to get that out. I'm fucking mad about it. So what Jim's getting at here is with Andrade out of the picture, uh, (laughs) uh, Mad Dog says in the chat, Jem to right squad confirmed. Yep. Oh, we'll get we'll get to that. Uh, yep. Yeah. So with Andrade out of the picture, with his brain caved in, presumably, also uh, his wife seven weeks. First ex- Andrade, ex- then Andrade. Yeah. yeah. So we get uh, uh, um, um, Humberto in the ring. Humberto. Oh, um, I can't do it. Yeah, uh, he's in the <laughs> ring. We don't know who he's taking on. Out comes Selena Vega, which is interesting. She comes out with Angel Gaza. Now this is one of the NXT uh, superstars. Uh, mm-hmm. At the time, I wasn't aware. Alberto's cousin. Yeah, didn't know that either. Yeah, so with uh, with Andrade out for like I don't know six or so weeks, by the looks of it, um, mm. will, does that mean we're going to see uh, 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 Zelina spend a bit more time with this gentleman? I think so, especially because there is that family connection there. Now, um, you know, Zelina gets in the ring, she starts talking to like Umberto with Angel Gaza. Um, and he he goes on to say that Umberto's a disgrace, um, you know, not only to their family but to the Latin community. Um, yeah, and it just it ends up being this whole like it's kind of like what you'd see happen when like a drunk auntie has too much wine at a Christmas party and she just starts digging into the family members. Hey, you should <laughs> fight your cousins. Me at Christmas parties. Oh my god, you're that drunk <laughs> just auntie. like. Yeah, no, I, no, it's just, like, he absolutely starts ripping into him, and I was like, oop, somebody's going to start throwing potato salad. Um, but, yeah, um, ends up, uh, yeah, Angel's supposed to be versing uh, Umberto in a match. Um, they end up getting into a bit of a scuffle. Uh, Angel goes to DDT, Umberto, and Rey Mysterio interrupts. Yeah. Um, and one thing I didn't know is back in Rey Mysterio's WCW days, Apparently, he was a tag team partner with 
Yeah, Angel's dad, I believe. Oh, Daddy Gaza. Yeah, so um, I can't remember his first name. Uh, I think it starts with H. Uh, 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 um, I, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, guess random Hispanic yeah, names. Yeah, but it was another Gaza. So like Ray has that connection to that family. So Ray is once again brought into this situation. Um, and it ends up being an official match between Ray and Angel, who has this vicious finishing move called the uh, like the wing clipper or something like mm-hmm. that. Vicious. That looks so cool. Um, anyway, uh, this pissed me off endlessly. Uh, match ends up. Zelina Vega pulls up the mat and Ray cops a hammerlock DDT on the cement. And I'm fucking sick of it. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it anymore. Like, we've seen the same thing fucking, like, four, five, six times now. It's, like, every week we're seeing it. Like, just stop. Like, it's not... Just stop. Look, I understand, I understand why they're doing it. A, it's sim- symbolic. Uh, you know, as in it's, the every, it's that idea of I'll get you with what you got me sort of thing. Um, mm. However, it's also devastating. We saw Carrillo out for X number of weeks with it. Uh, we're, lost back to, we're presumably going to see Andrade away for a couple of weeks because of it. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's effective. And, like, how mm-hmm. can you argue against that? That's right. Quite easily. I was like, fuck. I'm like, that's right, you can't. Like, you, 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 <laughs> no, you, quite right easily. Ahead. Like, it's just, oh, just the fuck. Like, sure, it's effective, but it's, 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 it's falling flat now. Mm. Like, something else. So how, how are you feeling about the idea of Zelina working with somebody else for a little bit? I think it's a smart move. Mm-hmm. She, she said it herself. She's like, you know, um, you know, smart people don't play fair because vulnerability is a liability. Mm. Um, She's got her head on straight. Like, she knows what she's on about. So she's so a really... business manager. She's not just some yeah. fucking rando. Yeah, no, she's, she's a switched on person. So I'm I'm interested. I think it's good to, to switch it up and have a fresh face. Um, I think it's good to see her with somebody else as well, um, creating new dynamics because, you know, there's only so much you can see of, like, Zelina Andrade. Um, so I think it's nice and fresh, and I'm interested to see where this goes and how, like, the bloodline out and stuff like that yeah no i'm curious to see whether we'll see more of angel uh seeing yeah. as he is an nxt superstar and a fast <coughs> riser apparently he ended up with a title in six months <coughs> excuse me um yeah no yeah look it's impressive stuff nonetheless mm-hmm. um i'm curious to see how uh how zelina does work with him whether he she works differently uh in for you know yeah, what kind of to Andrade. Like we mm-hmm. we've we've seen how she works in terms of that business structure. I'm mean, gonna use business terms. Yeah. You know, you know, she's looking at the synergy over here. Let's look at the synergy over here in this new cohort. I've just done like fucking ten business terms. Hate them. Yeah. Hate them. Um so I am curious to see how she works with it with Angel, whether we do see different approaches. If the approach is the same, if act, if, if the approach is the exact same, if anything, that'll show a weakness in her role as yeah. business manager. If we're seeing the cut, the cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste, uh, then there's not a lot of, you can see through what she does and that'll give yeah. whoever takes the, takes uh, her and Angel, presumably, uh, on in that time will come at a risk. Yes. But um, as you said, last thing we want you to do, Jim is to riot if if, if, riot. if we see this again you are gonna riot speaking of riots yes. that, we, we, <laughs> that we've seen again that was a reach of a fucking segue but I, I reached and I grabbed it you did it I was thinking the same thing though Ruby Riot is back she is she's looking Shock. awesome she's looking amazing man got the green hair green thing know, so, it was so good. a change from Beautiful, the red long longer hair, hair too. yeah stunning absolutely stunning so we I was a. Almost cried. Oh really? Yeah, I was so shocked. I was so excited because we've been talking about where's Ruby for weeks. Yeah, we have been actually. Um, and now she's back. I'm so excited. So it was. Uh, so this part wasn't awesome. So we saw a rematch of Lana and Liv again. Mm. For some fucking reason. Uh, match was was interesting. Like it's kind of what you expect. Um, whoever's working in the back of uh, uh, the backstage area of of Raw uh, may in fact be fired. Because they mm-hmm. failed to trigger Liv Morgan's uh, entrance video on the Tron. Um, instead, yeah. we got like 88 minutes of Lana. Um, yeah. But with Liv's music, it was super weird. And then it was, oh shit. And then it kind of ticked in at the last minute. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. 
he's walking home in that snow is all I'm saying yeah uh, yeah so they're in a ring they're a bit of a tuffle uh, Liv gets the one two three same move from uh, the same finisher as she did flatliner. the flatliner from the week before so mm-hmm. that's awesome that's hopefully that closes up this side of things because hopefully. Ruby makes her way in walks down the ramp she's like oh my god Liv's like oh my god I haven't seen you in fucking forever ah oh, best friends and Ruby's like oh man I'll give you a hug grabs her by the head and just fucking directs her yep just absolutely annihilate her. And then proceeds to kick the living shit out of her. Mm-hmm. Like, we're what? talking, like, stiff boots. Mm. What is going on here? It was awesome. I am so intrigued now. Like, I was sort of, because this Lana Liv thing was going nowhere, I was like, oh, God, here we go. I'm kind of over Liv at the moment. And I love Liv Morgan. Um, and now I'm, like, obsessed I'm just like, what the hell is going on here? Tell me everything. I want to see more. Like, I swear to God, if Ruby doesn't answer us next week, I'm going to be mad. So what are your presumptions? Let's get to, let's, let's get creative. What, what's your presumptions of what has led into this? I think it may have to do with, obviously, like, they were split up over the, um, over the, uh, da, 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 what do you call that thing? The, the shake-up. The shake-up. Yeah, yep. the shake-up. That's it. Um, and then with Liv Morgan's promo, she's like, you know, I no longer am I going to be told what to do or how to dress or how to do that. I think maybe Ruby's taking that as a dig mm-hmm. and she's, you know, trying to maybe get him try and prove that she's not like, I guess, like a crazy commanding leader. That it was like, you know, you were here because you wanted to be, not because I made you. I think that's I think that's more of a good point. So where I was thinking it was coming from was probably a place of, uh, you know, I've been off injured and you've been piss farting around with this woman. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're friends. Like you know, you know, we we all got disbanded. You know, Sarah got separated, but now you're back here. So you were at, mm. you were at uh, SmackDown for a little while, then you went missing and you come back here. Three of us are here, yet I'm not seeing uh, the connection between us right now. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I think I think it's very similar. To you. I think it's like you come out here saying that you were held in chains by this group, by the Riot Squad, and like this is crazy. Like, you know, I got no time for that. I'm not this you know vicious leader that you claimed I was. Plotsky's yeah. here in the chat, by the way. Plotsky Hi. is the man of Twitch. If you ever be on Twitch, you find Plotsky. He is everywhere in the best possible way. Please oh, go yeah, check yeah. him out. I uh, presume, presume twitch.tv slash Plotsky. Go check him out. Good dude. But uh, yeah, no, I'm, I think very similar to you. I think you, I think you might have nailed it on the head mm-hmm. there because until yeah. she comes out presumably next week and gives us the rundown of why she's made this decision to uh, to jump live in the ring, mm-hmm. we can only go on speculation. I believe we have speculated correctly. Now, do you think, like, where would this go? Uh, will we ever see the Riot Squad again? That's hard to say. I think we need to because the women's division is lacking tag teams. That is very true. I think it, I think we need it. So as it stands right now, Sarah Logan is not involved in this. Mm-hmm. Do you think she will? And who do you think she I will think side? So. Who do you think she will side with? Uh, oh, that I don't know. Mm. That's a really hard one. I think it's going to be a case of like, Liv will be in one ear, Ruby will be in the other, and she's. I think it's going to be a conflict for Sarah Logan. That's very true. Well, that's like nothing worse than when you're caught in the middle of two friends beefing it out. Mm-hmm. Like that. Oh, yeah. That is a, a pretty rough, rough place to be. I personally, I don't know where she's going to go. I kind of feel that she may be connected to to Ruby um, because you know Sarah hasn't seemed to have changed too much since the split. Ruby seems to be kind of herself still, and maybe there's that connection there. It's like, look, I haven't changed. Yeah. You know, you were my friend before you left. You're my friend now. I don't know what's going on with Liv. She's sitting there like lesbianing up with you know Lana. Mm. It's crazy. It's, cra- it's crazy times. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy times. Um, speaking of crazy times, Drew McIntyre, it is crazy to know know. that he is going to WrestleMania because of his win at the Royal Rumble. It's absolutely crazy. It's awesome. It's very exciting. And tonight we get to see him in ring for about, uh, five seconds. Yeah. Three of them being the dinging of the bell. Uh, Mm. he took on uh, Mojo Rowley, the current 24 seven champion and his fucking friend. Don't know who that guy is. I'm going to call Someone. him John. He comes yeah. out there under the ring with John. Out comes Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre's like, look, mate, I'm going to talk about Brock because fuck you. 
Yeah, exactly right. So then proceeds to uh, deliver this uh, promo about how he's just planning to kick the living fuck out of Brock Lesnar's face. Like, that's the plan. That's the goal. Oh, shit. Mojo, I forgot you were here. All right, can someone ring the bell? Booze! Claymore <laughs> kicks his face off. All right, one, two, three. Done. Yep. That was it. Done. He said he'd do it in three seconds, and I'm pretty sure it was quicker than that. Well, yeah, excluding the three count and the, the three dings of the bell, mm-hmm. it was easy less than three seconds. Yeah, ridiculous. So good. It makes him look so unstoppable, and I love that. Which is very true. Like, but we but we knew that he would be unstoppable. Um, it's interesting to have him go against Mojo Rally, let alone Mo- Mojo Rally being like, yeah, this guy eliminated 30 other people. I got this. Yeah. I love that Drew, as he was going on his, like, uh, on his, I guess, tirade or whatever he was doing, like, he was just having a bit of fun with it. And he's like, oh, Mojo, sorry, bro, I almost forgot you were there. <laughs> The we all have mojo we mm-hmm. we all have yeah i remember those awesome. promos that you did about you sitting in front of a window with a, pro, uh, a mirror with with a busted up eye yeah yeah nothing ever yeah. came of that so i'm glad that you're 24 7 champion now i guess mm. so, so drew does address uh brock lesnar getting up in his business last week Mm-hmm. Um, and once again, we do see Brock Lesnar appear tonight. Uh, yeah. He does come out to get involved in the main event, mm-hmm. uh, which was uh, pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. It was a uh, six-man tag. Uh, we had uh, uh, the Viking Raiders and Kevin Owens. That wasn't the main event. No, it was. Oh, was it? It was not. I'm all confused. It was not the, the main, main event. The main event was the triple threat match. Sorry, that, I'm so used to this storyline being the main event that it instantly threw me. Yeah. All right. No, the, the main event was... Um, the uh, the Super Show Down opportunity. Rollins. Yeah. So let me correct that. Rewind. The not main event, six-man tag, Viking Raiders and Kevin Owens against the AOP and Buddy, Buddy Murphy. Murphy. With Seth Rollins. With Seth Rollins well, ringside. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, um. So we they there was that was mentioned that Joe was out due to his face his, last his face week. pain yeah. from like diving out of the ring into the into the barrier. Mm-hmm. Uh. Yeah. So how how did you feel about this overall? Um. Look, I found it interesting because I'm noticing a trend here. Um. Obviously, like Joe was. But, but, Byron Saturn? No, is it Byron? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, Ryan. we should mention the announcement team has changed. Uh, mm-hmm. We forgot to mention this last week. So, yeah. uh, Lawler is still there. Vic Joseph was like, I ain't fucking work with this guy anymore. That's conjecture. I have no idea whether that's correct. <laughs> he leaves. And then that brings in Byron Saxton and Tom Phillips, previously of SmackDown. Um, mm-hmm. I with, with Dion Madden and now Vic Joseph leaving, who are both incredible. Mm-hmm pretty solid i do believe the weak the weak link and the problem is lola it is not the other two it is fucking lola and i still don't know why he is here yeah piss him off give us just byron and uh and uh, and uh, tom that's what we want that is better look it's it's not perfect but it is better than lola a lot better definitely sorry the trend Um, the trend that you've seen yeah, so the trend that I'm seeing is injuries around KO. Because tonight, one of the Viking Raiders smashed up their shoulder real bad. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I believe it was Eric was eliminated from the match. Um, and then Ivar injured himself. Yeah, uh, he... Uh, smashing into the alley. Yeah, hip board. and shoulder the board, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it ended up leaving very quickly, like, within the span of a second, Kevin Owens was on his own against Buddy Murphy and the AOP. Again. And, yeah. So we should mention uh, this was an elimination tag team match as well. It was, uh, yes. Where, you know, per, per pinfall, so, you know, mm-hmm. one member of the team would be out and whoever uh, uh, retained the longest wins. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, seeing KO sort of step up to the plate again this week, um, he ended up taking out, I think it was uh, Buddy Murphy first. And Acom, yeah. And Acom, yeah. And then, unfortunately, like, due to Yeah, Rizard just, like, there. fucked him up in the end there. Yeah, exactly it. Um, so, obviously, they do get the win. But, man, KO looks strong. He did. Like, how, how bloody strong does that guy look? Like, just from nowhere and taking out two huge dudes in one go. 
adding to adding to your your observation of uh, everyone who seems to be injured around Kevin Owens right now, because we, mm. we were discussing previously with this little semi faction they have going with you know Joe, Kevin, and the Raiders. Yes. I mean, we're asking who is the leader here? Who is? You Ooh. thought you thought it may have been Joe. I thought it may have been Kevin, or vice versa, or some way. Uh, I definitely I think, think it's KO. It's definitely KO, and I think we can see that here. These people are willing to hurt themselves to assist him here. Like yeah. two people are like, we are so not in the same way that like uh, Seth Rollins is as the Messiah. This is more of a we will go to an nth degree to help you and your cause against Seth. Or, yeah. or they are so rolled up by Seth that they are disre- like they are being. Uh, they have no regard. Yeah. yeah, no regard for their own heart, for their own safety. Yeah, I think that's more likely than the Kevin approach. Mm-hmm. But it, but we can't rule it out that maybe Kevin is becoming that leading force. Like I said, it's just you know a bunch of random dudes with a common cause. Like they don't like the Mosiah as much as anybody else does, so they're all just banding together with you know the same idea in mind. Mm. I don't think it's an actual faction. I just think it's a bunch of dudes just trying to get rid of that yeah and like as a collective false pe- yeah people can you know come together and take down a, a a person a tyrant or whatever however they want to to uh, uh frame seth rollins here but we, when you do bring a random collective of people together you always have issue you'll always have people you know fighting for power or fighting for their place within said group where what we're seeing over here as we discussed we've mentioned mentioned this multiple times in pre- previous episodes is this cohesive unit that is the messiah and his disciples right yeah. or as, as they're referring to them um yeah. you know we see buddy murphy uh come out and pretty much say it yeah which is awesome and uh you know the aop are just kicking ass they don't don't need uh much more motivations really to, to get things going and that we do see them assist in other ways in the correct main event <laughs> this yes. is the three man uh the triple threat for the uh opportunity at the super showdown so that was uh ricochet seth rollins and bobby lashley, bobby lashley. all getting a shot for super weird showdown combination very weird combo seth makes sense ricochet makes sense he's got beef with uh beef with brock bobby mm-hmm. lashley fuck you doing there mate granted mm-hmm. he has had a string of wins against rusev so in terms of if, if wwe uh were to look at it from a win-loss perspective which they don't mm-hmm. but if they did he would actually be within grounds understandably yeah. but it is to, but from an initial observations it is a very interesting um three dude setup uh, this did not go down the way I expected it would. Me either. It really didn't. I was so shocked. Like, I was not expecting that this is an awesome chance, which mm-hmm. ended up happening. I was shocked that Seth came out on his own. Yep. Um Yeah, and then he goes on a massive rant about how, like, you know, a year ago he was, like, you know, he was in the same position. Everybody was, like, you know, chanting his name, and this time they just don't care. Yeah, like, they how, totally how, were. Yeah, how so much can change in such a short, t- a short amount of time. Um, so, like, it was interesting what he had to say about that. But, um, yeah, I was I was not expecting any of this. Uh, yeah, so the winner of these triple threat for the opportunity at Super Showdown was Ricochet. Ricochet, you uh, not expecting No. Uh, so, in short, what happened uh, was the Viking Raiders came out. They started beating on Lashley. Uh, uh, the AOP came out and they all started... Was I, uh, it was AOP first, wasn't it? Either way, AOP were out. Ra- Raiders were out. A lot of ringside interference. Um, being, no, being KO tr- showed, yeah, so AOP showed up first and then KO came to the rescue with uh, with Eric. That's correct. Because Ivar was still out. Yeah, and so... ended up chasing Buddy and the AOP out of the, out of the ringside. 100% spot on. So, um, yeah, so with a triple threat match, there is no disqualifications, uh, anything exactly. like that. So they can certainly come around and and make a bunch of a b- bunch of a uh, uh, kerfuffle, and it yes. wouldn't affect the outcome of the match. However, it did lead enough distraction to uh, allow Ricochet to to come out victor by delivering a five forty onto Bobby's Lashley's giniferous chest. Boy, did he fucking bounce five, off that guy! Do you guy. mean a six thirty? Six thirty, not yeah, six thirty, not five forty. Yeah. Either way, doo, doo, off Ricochet. I mean, off Bobby Lashley. So, yeah. Bobby Lash, uh, sorry, Ricochet, Brock Lesnar. Brock so Lesnar shows showdown. up and F5s Ricochet, just like he did him. Drew McIntyre last year. 
Uh, last year, last week. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm interested to see it. I would have loved it if you kicked him in the dick again. Yeah. That would be awesome. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was, I was not expecting that. Yeah. But it is an, it is an outcome that I, if, if you have a look at where everyone stands, as we discussed at the start of this, it, in terms of delivering something that we want to see, this is, this is up that alley. Like Seth yeah. Rollins, Seth Rollins doesn't need that championship right now. Yeah, so it's no, not within definitely. his interest to sort of to get involved in this feud, even though he does have legacy. You know, he was one that dethroned Brock and, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but now we are in this place where Lashley, no, there's nothing here. It would just be two dudes fighting. And the best thing about wrestling is the story into it. And with Ricochet, there is that there is this short term history. A, yeah. There's a bit of beef amongst them. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I think. Brock does deliver ripper matches against smaller, like mm-hmm. wily dudes. Like think about Daniel Bryan matches. You think yeah. of, you think about um, uh, Ray Mysterio. Uh, Mysterio. You think about the Finn Balor match from last year. Yes. There's a bunch yeah. of potential here for a really banger match. Now it yeah. is a concern, of course, because with Brock Lesnar, with these finisher move being the F five or a suplex if you if you jump at him and he catches you you are fucked done you are and done that so many times. and that is exactly what dethroned kofi as well mm-hmm. like that and six it, second it jump will, and ray as well at rumble that's what got him hopefully out of the, yeah hopefully ricochet learns that lesson hopefully but the we'll the difficulty there is what is he going to do? That is yeah, his, his move set. Offense. His entire off entire moves, as you said, is offense. It's getting up, it's getting high, it's flippity doo daring. The only thing he mm. could potentially do is just constantly aim for the legs, bring the big boy down. So even if he catches him, he's not gonna he's not gonna be able to plex him or uh, or at least do the F five. Yeah. But we've not seen uh, Ricochet deliver that type of uh, of attack. So no, it's I'm, I'm unsure whether we'll even see that. Do you reckon it'll be pretty quick, like catch and drop? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I definitely think that we will be seeing uh, Drew versus Brock at Mania. I I agree. Um, I don't think we'll see any match at Chamber, um, no. but we will see this Super Showdown, and I I'm, I'm similar to you. I I don't yeah. see. Uh, Ricochet coming out as a as a winner here, like Ricochet is still relatively green uh, on the main roster. Mm-hmm. He's faced you know some awesome people at NXT. He says he's had a pretty good time at Raw so far, uh, but I don't. He is not ready to take on Brock Lesnar. Not at all. But it could be an inter- interesting result. Yeah, um, still be interesting. Nonetheless. Mm-hmm. So let me just quickly jump over here and, and consult my notes once again. Speaking of someone, that, speaking of having a killer time at NXT, uh, we saw this awesome match uh, between Asuka and Natalia. Oh yeah, vicious. Yeah, that was such a good match. Um, oh, I think Natalia might have busted up her eye or something. Yeah, so she yeah. got clogged in the eye. Big old shine eye. If you have a look at her Instagram mm-hmm. and Twitter, you see this massive black eye. Yeah. A absolutely beautifully vicious match. Um, you know, it, it was crazy to see like Oscar had um, had Natalia in some lock, and Natalia just picked her up effortlessly and dropped her. And I was like, holy shit! Yeah, sometimes like, I forget so how good. awesome Natalia actually is. Yeah, yeah, she really is. Um, unfortunately, she did end up tapping out to the Oscar lock, um, which then prompted uh, off the back of a distraction from Kyrie saying. Mm-hmm. Um, which then prompted um, Asuka after the match to grab the microphone and start screaming for Becky Lynch. Demanding um, rematch from Rumble. Demanding yep. a rematch, yep. Um, to which Becky does come out and she's like, you know, beating you gave me superpowers. Do you think I want to drink from that fountain again? You're damn right I do. And you're probably thinking, like, why would I, like, defend my title so close to WrestleMania? And she's like, because... Yep. coming out with those meme shades yeah yeah so good um but yeah basically she's just like all right ask her you're on and then Kyrie goes to attack her and she just throws her out with one arm and she's like see superpowers eyes in the back of my head and then she just walks off with the sunnies back on <laughs> beautiful absolutely beautiful i i want to see it again I was, gonna, yeah, I was about to say is this something that you want to see i do want to see it again it's interesting, though, because it is announced afterwards that it is actually on Raw next week, the title match. Uh, I was like, oh. Scott Ha What oh, says, Scott, hey, it's Jim. Hi. 
Hi, hello. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so look, I, I'm, 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 see, I'm unsure. I don't think I want to see this again. I think the, the what made the Rumble match work so well was that year's worth of, of, of build up and story. Um, however, I don't know who else Becky could take between now and Mania. Uh, mm. it's, 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 I don't think there's enough time to, to build up anything uh, yeah. new. However, you know, as we predicted in the past, Shayna needs to get involved somehow. When is that mm -hmm. going to happen? Now, with Super yeah. Showdown being uh, a Saudi match, a uh, Saudi pay-per-view, sorry, that does mean that we will we won't see any women's matches. Mm -hmm. So does this mean that we're They've getting some time. Does that mean we're getting this on Raw? Does that mean we're getting it on presumably Elimination Chamber? Um, where are we looking at here? For Shayna? Uh, or for Asuka, when's this match going to happen? They announced that it's going to be on Raw next week. Yeah, I missed that part. I said that like two minutes ago. Totally missed it because I was busy looking. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at Scott's name and like, I don't know how to pronounce this. Yeah, Scott how what? Scott how what? I just, just seemed to, I was like, is that thought? Is there a thought in the middle there? Like, is, what, what's, Scott how thought. Like, what's, what's he selling to me? Not how over there, Do, do we have Scott. to drink Scott's bath water? Is that what we're getting at? <laughs> Oh, so yeah, it really threw me actually. Like I was being so down. Went, I don't know that word. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, happens. as you said, happening Raw next week. Title opportunity on a Raw. Can't complain. Can't yeah. complain. Uh, that. If that's the case, then that totally allows for uh, Shayna just to come in and break that match up. Yeah. Do you think yeah, we'll easily. see that? I don't know. I don't think so, to be honest. I think it's. I think it'll be like a cut and dry match, and then I think afterwards is when Shayna will show up. True, 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 true. I think it's, but, I yeah. think they will be involved in, in some capacity uh, yeah. because that is that that is where it's looking to go uh, for for Becky because we know as we get into the final part of the show tonight is Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair winning her opportunity at Royal Rumble to take on the champion of her choosing. We've seen her versus Becky enough. It is end of times for that. I don't want to yeah. see that. She's had the Raw Championship no. numerous times. Uh, she comes in the ring and says exactly that. She talks about Bailey. Yeah. She's fought Bailey many times. She's won over Bailey many times. Mm -hmm. She's had the SmackDown Championship many, many times. Mm -hmm. Now, Jem, very rarely do I get to do this, but Ryan was right. Because Rhea Ripley made her way into the ring and ch and propositioned. Challenged, yeah. Charlotte Flair. Yeah, she goes on to say, you know, you talk about beating Becky and beating Bailey, but uh, if I remember correctly, you haven't beaten me. Only but once have they you. ever come face to face, and that was at, uh, during Survivor Series. Survivor Series, and Rhea beat Charlotte. Yep, yeah, with that sneaky crucifix pin when she was doing the figure eight mm -hmm. uh, on. Mm -hmm. someone bailey i think it was bailey um but yeah. yeah awesome you know what i absolutely loved about this though i love that when charlotte was just even discussing the concept of where she's gonna go the crowd was chanting right yeah now. man beautiful look one thing i did not like was jerry lawler was like who the hell is this and then he couldn't even pronounce her name even though they said it seven million times look, i'm just gonna put it out there that's what happens when people listen to this show. They hear takes like that, and we, it fills the masses like a little Chinese mm -hmm. whisper. It spreads its way through the WWE universe. They hear, and they go, ooh, I hear that one show with those two awesome hosts that said Ray Ripley uh, may, maybe had the opportunity against Charlotte, or should have. And sure enough, it happened. We willed it, it into it. Sure we willed it into existence, Jem. Well, I, I'm we not, don't know yet. I'm not saying that we are responsible but we are responsible. We don't know yet because Charlotte didn't say anything other that than That is true. Woo. It was confirmed that she and is making her way to NXT. Going to, yeah, she's going to NXT on Wednesday to uh, answer. The Why program. would she go to NXT to say no? What an absolute exactly. waste of time. Exactly. And look at the discussion it's here. It's going to happen. Charlotte's like, I've had the Raw Championship multiple times. I've had the Women's Championship multiple times. Oh, and she what to it did yeah. we say, Jem? We said she's only ever had that NXT Championship once. And she can't call herself the queen, the best woman wrestler the WWE has ever seen if she has only held that belt once. 
Holy shit! Am I excited to see this match? Like yeah, we're, she's gonna say, we yes, are pres- so. we're make, look. We've made presumptions in the past, and they've totally turned out to be true, as we've just proven here. But that is one hundred percent the case. Charlotte Flair will be going to NXT to say yes, and we will see Charlotte Flair, Ray Ripley, at WrestleMania. Oh, cry! It's gonna be awesome. Oh, it's, it's gonna be, be amazing. So good. It's so good. It's I don't even know who's gonna win. Now, I am, if it happens, I at, at this stage in time, at this point in time, I cannot predict how it's going to go. Now, of course, yeah. there are concerns because it, it did get announced as well that we are getting uh, uh, Ripley versus Bianca Belair at uh, yes. NXT Portland, which is in two weeks, by Portland, the way. Yep. We might do a sneaky uh, review on that one for anyone that was interested because yeah. um, I'm excited as fuck. For, for, I'm always yeah. excited for TakeOver. Um, where was I going with that? I remember. I had a brain fart. Possibly could be Bianca Belair. That's, that's where I was going. Thank you very much. So there is that threat. Bianca Belair could potentially dethrone Ripley between now and then. Uh, as we saw from her incredible uh, run at Royal Rumble, eliminating eight contestants. And there is a concern here. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. Belair versus Flair could also be a ripper. But wouldn't wouldn't we want to i personally want to see ripley more yeah definitely yeah because she came out she's looking boss the music is spe- yeah, the music is spectacular that australian yeah. ac- the australian accent ooh, cutting through like a blunt like a blunt sword like it's uh oh yeah man she was yeah oh, it's so rough compared to everything else already. it was an o- as obvious as a mullet yeah, <laughs> she could have walked in and be like, "Hey, yeah." I'm like, "Hey." She basically did. She's like, "Oi, Charlotte." Oi, Charlotte, like, how you going? Fuck yeah, Adelaide. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm really excited to see that match. Like, she just know. said, "It's gone on, can't." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been perfect. Uh, that would be amazing. Actually, she was like, "You what?" It's gone. <laughs> hey, yeah. It's gone. They should though. She's just like <laughs> done the true Australian uh, way of com- way of talking and just connected all connect all the syllables into one noise. It sounds kind of like a broken chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, shout out, money. Shout like I have no idea what just happened, but I'm gonna fight you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just insult me? Slap. Yeah, I, I don't know what you said, but I, I imagine it was bad. <laughs> But anyways, that does bring us to the end of this week's episode of The Young and the Wrestlers Raw Breakdown, Raw Analysis. Hashtag Raw Anal. Be careful where you tweet mm-hmm. that. Uh, there is no dirt sheet tonight. I did reach out yeah. to Dash and he's like, look, I got nothing. The one thing I had was this rumor mill about Charlotte thinking about doing with Ripley. But you fucking nailed it. You don't even need me tonight. I'm like, damn right, Dash. I don't need you. I'm my own dirt sheet writer because I use my brain. I don't need connections. I can just fucking see the future. Suck it. Suck it, Dash. But really, I love you, Dash. He's a good, good kid. Big love. But this wrestling conversation, our raw breakdown, does happen every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. on your podcast. So it says 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you want a SmackDown conversation, head over to those same places, same time, different day, Tuesdays. You got, a, you got a SmackDown breakdown on Tuesdays. Isn't that nice? If you want to join that wrestling conversation, head over to facebook.com slash groups slash the pop culturist. You could do the ketchup dance like uh, Gem is right now. If if, if you if you were so it's like inclined. a little song now. Nail it. Absolutely nail it. But if you want to join the conversation, <laughs> Facebook.com slash pop culturist, Twitter, Discord, Instagram, all those links are in the down below area. Come chat with us. But if you want to chat with us live, head over to twitch.tv slash the pop culturist. When we're not playing games on here, we are streaming. We are live recording these podcasts so you can join us in the chat. Just like Scotty the Thotty did. Just like Blosky, <laughs> just like Foffman Ding just like mad dog just like the champion gamer all good friends of the show that come and join that conversation absolute champions and we always record that the night before so if it goes up thursday it's wednesday night and dash game is here he, he's in the chat too Hi. dash is here you know you can talk you can talk to the dirt sheet dash himself old dash melzer <laughs> get excited but if you want to support us in a, in a financial fashion head over to patreon.com slash the pop culturist support us at any tier value currently no rewards uh it's just whatever you feel like it you are but however you are no obligation to do so if you want to support us in more one-off fashion though head over to popculturist.com slash shop we can buy shirts and other assorted shit without logos on it if you are listening to us on podcast services be sure to give us uh reviews 
star ratings, tell your friends about it. You go, hey, friend, you know what you need in your life? Some raw anal from two <laughs> awesome Australian podcasters. They're like, pardon? They're like, yeah, that's what you get. That's what you need. Need some from raw anal up here. Ooh, shouldn't have added that up your part. <laughs> Wow. We'll be back on Monday to talk uh, Monday night on Twitch, Tuesday morning on your podcast services and YouTubes to ch- to talk smack down. Damn. But until then, I'm Ryan Betson. And I'm Jeff. We'll see you then. The Young and the Wrestlers, the pop culture is WWE podcast is fan support over at Patreon at patreon.com slash the pop culturist. And we'd like to thank our Patreon producers and our Patreon founders for their kindness, their support, and their generosity. Our Patreon founders, Alpha Ferret, Craig O'Flaherty, David Chataway, Jesse Stevenson, and Jacob Garner. And our Patreon producers, AJ Abatomi, Damien Holdies, Kyle Dunn, Lee Winterchauvin, Nathan Massetti, Paul James, Pure Mongrel, and Sean Levitt.